welcome everyone to our second session of the 2020 Capstone presentations. I'm Jennifer Long. I taught the Capstone Seminar. I should say I was very lucky to teach the Capstone Seminar this spring. On behalf of my wonderful series colleagues, Professor uh, and Director of the Center, Angela Stent, Wes Radomski, and Jessica Miller, who is moderating our panel quite ably today, um, I want to thank you all for attending. Um, I'm going to turn this over to our next speaker, Nas Shaw. Um, and the, the title of her presentation is Tourism Development in Uzbekistan, Challenges and Opportunities. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nasha, and, and the topic of my capstone project is Tourism Development in Uzbekistan, Challenges and Opportunity. I choose this topic because it's Uzbekistan actually is a country with great potential for expanded tourism industry. It has historical, like archaeological, architectural, and natural treasures. The climate and natural conditions of the country are among the most favorable in Central Asia. Located in ancient Silk Road, Uzbekistan has more than 4,000 historical and architectural sites. In addition, Uzbekistan cuisine and wine are attractive as well. With this great potential, Uzbekistan put considerable focus on developing tourism since the independence. Especially after 2016, the country has pushed through a wide range of economic reforms. Tourism in the country has increased fivefold over the last four years. Last year, more than 6.7 million tourists visited Uzbekistan. The volume of experts to tourism services amounted to 1.3 billion US dollars. The country is planning to attract 7 million tourists by 2025. So with this research background, um, I really want to know what is driving Uzbekistan's tourist reform. What's the implication of tourism development for Uzbekistan? What did the Uzbek government do to improve the tourism? What are the challenges for tourism development? What can the Uzbek government uh, do to further promote the uh, development? Here I could provide some policy recommendations. And with the pandemic of COVID-19, should we reconsider the tourism development in Uzbekistan? Um, and uh, what's the impact it could bring to the country? And what kind of preparation should the government do to um, the future recovery? So here, let's look at the first part. What is driving Uzbekistan for tourism reform? First of all, I think this is a decision based on Uzbekistan's economic structure. The country traditionally relied on the cotton industry, which is really labor and water intensive industry. Um, it may have a bad impact on the environment and is not efficient and beneficial uh, enough to support the whole country's economy. And now the export of natural gas has replaced cotton industry as the first the largest portion of the uh, economic income. However, uh, high, uh, to, uh, like the high dependence on energy export is, uh, export is risky from the perspective of the energy security and the resources are non-renewable. And energy export could easily be affected by the world oil price and international affairs. So for Uzbekistan, it's time to optimize it is, uh, its economic structure, develop new industry that can create numerous employment opportunities and tourism uh, with uh, great potentials for tourism. Maybe tourism is the best choice for, Uzbek for Uzbekistan based on its economic structure. And secondly, um, tourism is, uh, has a huge chain effect. Uh, tourists are consumers coming from all over the world. They stay in a place for a period of time and which means um, it's a set of actions and activities. The United Nations World Tourism Organization defines 
12 tourism industries that can be serving the tourists in general, including accommodations, food and beverage, railway passenger transport, road passenger transport, water passenger transport, airway, and uh, tra travel agencies, and a lot of more like industries. And this means uh, if you develop tourism, you can uh, like invite a lot of consumers from all over the world and if the demands just increase it will drive the development of other sectors in the country for developing countries like uzbekistan developing tourism could in the short term stimulate the overall demand in its economy which drives the development of other sectors um, and also, um, tourism can bring a global standard for the country, and it's a good chance for Uzbekistan to open up. Tourists can compare the conditions, service, and infrastructure of different tourist destinations, and it will bring a global standard for a country. So this means that and uh, for Uzbekistan, the country really wants to open up um, since, the, uh, since tw uh, 2016, when the previous president, Islam Karimov, passed by. Uh, the political and economic climate has changed a lot overall the country. Um, the new president, Mirzoyev, appears committed to ambitious agenda for political and economic reforms. He really wants the countries to jump out of the bad neighbor trap um, and, and also promote its economy and be a good neighbor in the region and be opening up to the global market and be more proactive in the global issues. And uh, so for Uzbekistan, promoting the development of, uh, of tourism um, can uh, help the country to open up to the world and open up to the global standard. Also, it's a good chance for Uzbekistan to uh, cross-cultural communication, let the world know about uh, Uzbekistan, the country. Um, actually, in the world, a lot of people don't quite know about the country. Um, so it's a good time for Uzbekistan to build a global image. So in the past, what did the government do to improve the tourism? First of all, it's improved its visa policy. In the past, a complicated visa policy of Uzbekistan is an obstacle for tourists all over the world. So the country just introduced the e-visa system and uh, up to now um, they introduced a visa-free region for 86 countries in the world including China, European countries, um, and Japan and these are um, most of the tourists uh, coming from. And also Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan initiated a Silk Road visa which is a concept like a Central Asian Schengen and if the initiative is launched, then if you uh, have the Sucro visa, you can visit five Central Asia countries at the same time. It is a really good option for tourists because everyone wants to save their times and visit the Silk Road uh, at the same time. So it could attract a, attract a lot of uh, foreign tourists. And also the country improved its accommodations. Um, they uh, published some regulations and legislation to provide some ex uh, exemption of tax for hotel owners. And here, some many international brands like Hilton, um, Hyatt, and the Germans, um, like resort uh, groups, have entered the market. And if you open up the Airbnb app, you can see now there are over 300 guest houses in the country. And it's a good cho choice for tourists. And also, um, in the past, um, unmarried couple are not allowed to live in the same room, and now it's allowed. Uh, the legislation has changed. And to promote the transportation, um, Uzbekistan just launched uh, uh, open sky region for airways development. And um, the, uh, the region is going, uh, the goal of the region is to expand the cooperation with Uzbekistan's uh, airport, airlines with uh, international uh, 
other international airports and other countries. So during 2020 to 2012 uh, to 2022, flights with cities of foreign countries that are promising for attracting national and foreign airlines should be phased in. The list of such cities include um, Kiev, Vienna, Budapest, and a lot and more uh, 30 cities in the world. Moreover, all airports in Uzbekistan are entitled to uh, independently um, determine the rates and fees for service provided to foreign and local airlines. They will be able to conclude agreements with local and foreign companies on a competitive basis. For um, the railways and tourist buses, um, the countries also uh, seeks help from international organizations and other countries. The European Bank for Restructuring and Development has provided two loans for the country to develop railways. And also the country just introduced some intercities buses and um, that is really helpful for independent tourists to visit the country. And also the country is seeking collaboration with foreign partners. Um, EBRD, as mentioned before, has provided loans for transportation development, and China is a big market that Uzbekistan is targeted in. For seven years, China has been the world's largest travel spender, and by 2018, this um, the number of tra uh, the tr Chinese tourists has risen by a, a as an astonishing rates. And this boom has huge implications for the global tourism economy. And China is pushing forward its Belt and Road Initiative in Central Asia countries. So, uh, and Uzbekistan is a major partner of it. Also, the, uh, the United States Service of uh, Forests also helped the country to develop its natural reserves um, and uh, build up the national parks. There are also challenges for tourism development. First of all, there are um, political and reputational challenges. Unlike the economic reform, which is in full swing throughout the country, the political reform lags behind from other areas. According to the latest data published by The Economist, Uzbekistan ranks 157th among 167 countries in the um, annual democracy index. And look at a figure here. The score of Uzbekistan for corruption perception index is 25 out of 100, which ranks 153rd among 180 countries for 2019, according to Transparency International. So in Uzbekistan, corruption is a serious issue. This may bring huge concerns for foreign companies who want to enter the market. No one wants to engage in a crime and participate in an unbalanced competition. So um, this is the political and reputational challenges. And although the country has developed a lot and uh, improved its tourism industry, it, to, uh, in fact, the country has relatively poor tourism carrying capacity. According to um, the survey published by the UNWTO in 2014, a lot of tourists are complaining about uh, the banking system, the difficulty to uh, withdraw cash in the country, um, lack of language service and information center in the country, and the bad um, medical conditions. So there are a lot of needs, um, things need to be um, improved in the future. So um, in terms of the policy recommendations, I think Uzbekistan should full, uh, fully support and utilize the private sectors. Um, because tourist cover, uh, tourism covers a lot of industries um, and it's a good time for um, Uzbekistan to develop its own private sector companies and invite uh, foreign investment and companies coming to the country. Um, so I think secondly, the country should expand its international collaborations. Uh, 
uh, with a good relation with other countries and with international organizations, uh, it's quite uh, easier for Uzbekistan to seek financial and technical uh, help and support from these countries. And the, uh, Uzbekistan should promote efficient and effective um, uh, way of propaganda and informational campaigns. Uh, I think the country should set up like um, a, a strategy according to like targeted market. For example, for China, um, people don't use like Facebook or Instagram. Maybe uh, Uzbekistan can create an account in a social uh, Chinese social media like Weibo, WeChat, or um, like Ctrip, uh, which is the largest tourism platform in China, and attract tourists there. And also, I think Uzbekistan should cultivate its own talent and experts in tourism. And uh, in the future, it will reduce its independence on other countries and, and on other international organizations. However, as we all know, on the, COVID, the pandemic of COVID-19 has changed the world a lot. According to the data published by UNWTO, um, to now, the impact of COVID-19 has caused um, um, 20 to 30 percent decrease in the tourism industry in the world. So um, in Uzbekistan now, there are over 3,000 confirmed cases in the country, but we don't know uh, the exact data um, because of the lack of testing like boxes in the country. And the country is totally locked down and well uh, locked down for uh, maybe in the summer for a longer period. And this, uh, the conditions of um, COVID-19 in the overall Central Asia is serious. So um, there will be a huge loss um, in, for the country. And I think um, the Woodsby government should prepare for the future recovery during the pandemic time. Since people are staying at home, and like me, I really want to travel to other places. And so maybe it's a good time for the government to provide propaganda, like um, make some preparation for the recovery in the future. And also I think the government should seek help from uh, international experts, maybe from UNWTO to support their um, like future strategy for a recovery. Um, and maybe um, from this pandemic, we uh, the world turned to online, turned to a virtual, like a virtual version. Maybe tourism industry could change uh, in the future too. So I think the government should reconsider the role of uh, tourism in its whole economy and maybe be more innovative and um, in the future. So, but after all, like in general, I think tourism still has a great potential in Uzbekistan and the country should develop it. Um, yes. And thank you for your all listening. Yeah. Thank you, Na. That was really informative. Um, I'm going to ask the attendees if you'd like to submit a question on the Q&A to go ahead and I'll offer Dr. Stent the first opportunity to, to ask a question. Okay. Thank you. Yes, that was very informative. I found that very interesting. Um, I wonder if you've done any comparative looking at the other Central Asian countries. Um, is Uzbekistan now the major tourist destination in Central Asia? Are other countries doing better? How would you compare what Uzbekistan is doing? Because obviously, until the change of leadership a few years ago, mm -hmm. it was very much closed off to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Could I ask before you answer if you wouldn't mind stopping your screen sharing so we can see you? Okay. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Here we go. Okay. So um, I think among uh, all the Central Asia countries, uh, Uzbekistan is the first country to put tourism development in its national like development strategy. Uh, it all, uh, the country really wants to put 
tourism in a very important role of its own economy and build it as a pillar industry for the whole country. And I think among all Central Asia countries, Uzbekistan has the greatest uh, potential uh, for tourism development since it has a lot of like historical sites, national reserves. And uh, now um, I think maybe Kazakhstan, uh, people uh, go to Kazakhstan a lot because the country is wealthier uh, and um, it's easier maybe to travel to Kazakhstan. But I think Uzbekistan uh, has like a really a great potential for um, the tourism development. And um, I didn't really um, made a lot of comparison uh, between to, uh, Uzbekistan and other Central Asia countries. And my focus is still on Uzbekistan. So, yeah. Great. We have a, a question from Professor Sabonis Health. Mm -hmm. What's the progress of the Silk Road visa and what are the problems? Also, okay. what political challenges does increased tourism pose to the government of Uzbekistan? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the Silk Road uh, visa uh, was initiated in uh, last year, and Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan ha have agreed uh, to promote um, the Silk Road visa. Uh, however, um, other Central Asia countries like Kyrgyzstan, um, Tajikistan, um, they are not ready for the Silk Road visa yet, and they are afraid, maybe afraid of the coming of tourists um, to the country. Uh, and also because of some like border conflicts and other regional conflicts between the Central Asia countries, um, this, this could be uh, maybe a threat for national security. And this country are still looking um, and waiting for maybe the result of um, the development of tourism in Uzbekistan and to see um, whether it's a good choice to engage in the Silk Road visa region. And Professor Smith has fascinating presentation. Na, thank you. I'm curious about what other aspects besides historical sites might attract tourists to Uzbekistan. Does it have nature sites for ecotourism, oh. some special food production? Oh, so actually, uh, Uzbekistan has like many uh, beautiful national parks. Uh, and uh, glaciers, uh, mountains is a good place for hiking. And um, you can uh, also experience the local uh, like culture there and maybe camping in the yards, uh, uh, in the pasture. And also Uzbek uh, food is really delicious. And it's combined different culture like Turkish food, uh, like um, infected by a lot of cultures. So uh, I think it's really attractive for tourists. Great. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what your research shows are the countries that Uzbekistan is really focusing on um, for advertising tourism, sort mm -hmm. of where do Uzbek authorities think they're going to get the most people to travel to the country? Mm -hmm. Are there different challenges based on these sort of target audiences that they may have? Okay, so now the country just pay uh, like paid most of its focus on the infrastructure construction, since it's the basis for the tourism development. And the country should firstly develop uh, the infrastructure and then maybe promote um, the development of our, like propaganda or other advertising things. And um, to attract uh, like different targeted uh, tourists, maybe for Chinese tourists, in the past, uh, the the biggest obstacle is the visa policy, and so the the visa exam exemption just happened uh, in January this year, uh, and but the pandemic ha just happened. So, uh, yeah, um, and um, maybe for American like tourists, uh, the most obstacle is because of the distance, long distance, uh, long flights, and lack of understanding of the country. Um, so 
uh, I think the country like Uzbekistan should pay more attention to propaganda and advertising. And I know that Uzbek government has already like invited some movie teams uh, from Hollywood to maybe shoot some documentary movies in Uzbekistan uh, using the natural like reserves and the historical sites there to show their beautiful view to the world. And I think it's a good starting point. Yeah, and I think Uzbekistan should uh, like also make good use of some international platforms like Lonely Planet, like um, uh, other like uh, yes, uh, like uh, like tourist uh, like trip advisors, other app to make further propaganda to the world. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess then a follow-on question to Professor Sabonis Health is kind of. Um, if you could dig a little deeper in sort of the potential consequences for Uzbekistan bringing more tourists in, mm -hmm. and specifically, um, just that would open up the society in a way and expose Uzbeks to outside ideas, things they may not have had mm -hmm. um, uh, acquaintance with so far. I mean, have in your research, have you seen that the Uzbek government is thinking about that and trying to to figure out how to mitigate any of those effects or is that not really on the um, yeah. okay um i think now the country uh just want like looks the tourism uh, mostly from economic perspective mm -hmm. because the they really want to reduce the poverty and create employment positions for the country to promote economic like development. But um, um, from my research, I know that uh, the freedom of like speech in Uzbekistan is mm, not that good. Like, um, so uh, some keywords maybe are not allowed to publish in the social media. And I think the, um, the growing number of tourists could bring some like concerns from the government side but they do not consider it really seriously now and um, so i think it's a good point for future maybe research and analysis mm -hmm. i mean this is potentially a big topic as mm -hmm. you know as the economic investment progresses so you could certainly do more yeah yeah thank you mm -hmm. If there are no other questions, then that was fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you for you all. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you to, to those who submitted questions.